in the first exercise you are asked to model this particular joint you can think of this joint as a very small part attached to the car but then from a trailer there is a bolt that is then inserted into this joint so for example here so this joint is attached to the car at the bottom and a bolt is inserted from the trailer into this hole such that when the car is pulled this joint makes the trailer to follow now as the car is being pulled this bolt inserts or exerts 100 kg force into this hole now it is interesting to notice that as the bolt is uh, cylindrical and when it is inserted into this hole and pulled only the top half of this hole will be in contact with the bolt and hence it will experience a uh, force of uh, 100 kg now if we con convert this 100 kg force into newton so that is 100 into 9.8 9800 newton now of course we can uh, model this part using 90, 90 9800 newton force to the top half of this hole or we can go a bit further and convert this force into stress and that could be done by dividing the area of this top half which is uh, thickness multiplied by uh, pi into r so this area with this area we can divide 9800 newton to get uh, 6.25 megapascal of pressure so 6.25 megapascal would mean 6.25 uh, into 10 to the power 6 pascal now if we, we move back to the dimension uh, of this plate so we already know the thickness is 5 millimeter but the uh, rest of the dimensions are given in meter here something to notice is the diameter of this hole is 0 0.2 meter so the radius of this hole is 0 0.1 meter what more we know about uh, the joint is the it is made of steel the young's modulus of this given steel is 206.8 gigapascal or 206.8 uh, into 10 to the power 9 pascal poisson's ratio is 0 0.29 some hints given is that uh, this part bottom part of the joint which is connected to the car we can model this part as fixed and then insert 6.25 megapascal of pressure to the top half of the hole another hint is given in terms of these partitions there are three partitions so you are encouraged to make at least this partition and this partition this is optional but uh, how these partitions help is uh, let's say you want to give the load or to give the pressure into this uh, top half in abacus model then you need to select these uh, two surfaces or this top half of this surface or when you do the partition it becomes one surface here and one surface here so to select them you need at least to have this one partition but then uh, as this is symmetry around uh, this particular partition line so it is beneficial to also make a partition from here to here this is the window you get after launching abacus so this part is used for vis visualization of the model here you have model tree and you have a job tree uh, here you have module and uh, depending on this module this uh, ribbon at the top will keep changing so you will have different option when you select different module so uh, the a modeling in abacus will takes you to use different options here also different options here or alternatively you can also use uh, only the module 
and for the module uh, the menu that you get here but uh, you can anytime switch to or choose to use any of this menu either you choose from here or you choose from here either you go module by module or for example load here of course you also have load here and uh, you have part in the module you also have part here so if you model from here or if you model from here that won't matter much but I will try to mostly use this model tree to model this particular part now a recap to model so what things we need in uh, abacus to build first we have to build the drawing of this joint and then as it has a thickness so we will also have to define what's the cross section in other way cross section would uh, mean the thickness of uh, i mean cross section would define the thickness of this joint and uh, next thing we need to do you have to define the young's modulus and poisson's ratio of a material and then assign this that material to this particular part then we have to give this boundary condition that it is fixed to the car and then also give the pressure that is uh, exerted by the bolt connected to the trailer and next thing we have to do is uh, like any other finite element simulation model we have to do mesh of this whole um, model and uh, by mesh it usually usually means that we have to divide it uh, into small elements so once all of these uh, modeling procedure is done then uh, you will just uh, double click and uh, we will make something called job and uh, right click and submit the job so this part is very straightforward it takes only few seconds so most of the works that we will do is building this model from top to bottom so we go to start uh, the parts and once you click you come to this window you can choose to have a three-dimensional or two-dimensional uh, drawing so we will choose to do a two-dimensional modeling as the as the thickness of this plate plate is quite thin and uh, approximate size we know the approximate size is quite small it's about 0.2 meter but it doesn't matter much as long as uh, we are reasonable for example i can say the approximate size is one so the size of the joint which is 0.2 meter approximately is well within this defined approximate size now if you, if you continue then you come to the drawing board so there are several way that you can draw this particular part so one of those way could be that i take this rectangular command and draw randomly a rectangle so we can think of this part which is rectangle and this rectangle has a height of 0.14 meter and width of 0.08 meter so we can come here and define the dimensions so this dimension is 0.08 meters and uh, this dimension is so once i click here this one pops up here here i have to put the dimension and i know the dimension is 0.14 so enter so first half is done and the next part is i have to put this semicircle and then the circular hole to get the circle drawn i will use this command first i will define the center and then i will define the whole circle and then the next uh, thing i need to do is to define the circular hole which is 0 0.01 in diameter so my circular uh, drawing command is selected so i come here and now i will draw this circle now look there is a cross sign at the tip of my cursor so it is always convenient that you make sure this cursor is uh, or this uh, point is either to this side or that side otherwise you will 
face difficulty while you are doing meshing. So I do it such that this one is into this particular line. Once it's done, now it's time that I put the dimensions. So look at how it's saying the radius to be defined. And uh, the radius that I, uh, that's the radius of the circle that I drew already is by, by or randomly was 0 0.15. And I know it has to be 0 0.01 meter in radius. If I enter, so here I have the drawing of this part. But then I have also this part, this part, uh, I mean, this uh, half of the circle and this line uh, extra that I need to trim off. So this is the option for trim. So click there, select this part, it's trimmed off. Select this part, this part, this part. So everything is trimmed off. Now you have the accurate drawing of the joint. Once you're done, so all done, I cancel here. I say it's done. So here you have the part or the drawing. Next thing you need to do is to, if I go by the same order that in the model tree is to define the material. So double click, so there would be a pop-up. So you can define name or you can just leave it as material one. If I define this one to be steel, then in mechanical, I will define the elastic property because elastic property means only the Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio. And for the steel, only these two material properties are given. So the Young's modulus, we remember this is 0 uh, 206.8. E means 10 to the power 9. And Poisson's ratio is 0 0.29. So the material is defined. Then we still don't know what's the thickness of this drawing. So that is defined in section. So if you double click section, so it comes section one, we can keep the name, solid, homogeneous. Yes, we keep the default, continue. And then it says um, the material. So the still spelling is wrong, but uh, we keep it as it is. Um, so, this material is defined and uh, it says plain stress or plain strain thickness. So in our case, it's a plain stress uh, condition and uh, the thickness is five millimeter, but we are giving rest of our dimension in meter. So you have to convert that uh, thickness into millimeter, uh, into meter. So five millimeter will mean this is 0 0.005 meter. And then we have a section but uh, it's a bit way around. We have to, this is probably the only time has to go back and uh, into the parts, we have to assign that section one that we created into this part. So in the part, if I click section assignment, select the whole part, done. And then there would be a pop-up that says that uh, now this section will be assigned to that particular part and you are done. So what we did, we draw this one, uh, the part, and then uh, we defined a section that says which material in it and what's the thickness. And this section we manually then assigned into this particular part. Um, in Abacus, uh, if you have multiple parts, of course, then you have to, if you want to do the simulation, you have to bring all the parts that you have drawn there could be these, probably you draw a car, you draw a trailer, for example. To do the simulation, then you have to bring the trailer, bring the car or anything else you want into an assembly. But as I said that for this particular exercise, we will just model this one and will not model any external object. So it's a single part simulation. However, Abacus will always require that you make an assembly even though it's a single part simulation. So it's a routine work to, to be done. So anyway, let me go ahead and make an instance in the assembly and uh, select default. If it is dependent, you can make it independent. That, may, that might help you uh, with the meshing. But uh, this, very, this is very trivial. So apply, okay. 
uh, so this part is selected so okay and then now we have uh, gone through almost first half of the model the next thing we need to do is define a step so this is actually uh, nothing much to know on that if you double click in step so you will have this particular menu you can just accept the default so just to know that how this model will be simulated um, this is basically defined in this option so it's uh, something related to calculation of this model but uh, for now you can just select the default and that's enough so once this uh, step is defined uh, you will have this pop-up just accept the default and go to next after the step uh, there are other options field output history output but i think for now you can also skip that let's um, now define uh, the load and boundary condition if you remember the load we will put in terms of pressure in the top half of this uh, circular hole but uh, it is now difficult to select this top half because uh, there is no partition if you select this one you will be selecting the uh, the entire hole so to solve this problem we will make partitions we will make one partition in this direction we will make another partition in this direction the partitions are made by drawing line and uh, to draw it you will go to tool and then find this partition command and it will pop up do you want to partition face or edge so edge are these and face are these are the face so of course we want to make a partition drawing to the face so we will make a drawing or sketch to this face and uh, it will say select the face you want to partition so let me select this one and done so that means we are back to the drawing board but uh, this time we are drawing some shadow line on top of our already existing parts so this shadow line is going to be one here and select again and one from here to here so that makes sure that we have this top half uh, possibility to select that top half now you could also argue that why i put this partition as i said that this partition as this is a symmetry line will help us doing the mesh so once uh, we have this uh, partition line drawn we will uh, click done and there you go we have these two partitions now it would be possible that we define our pressure here and not the whole thing this, this particular edge and this particular edge to do so we we'll double click load and this will uh, pop up this window it says pressure so, so if it's something else is selected we are going to select pressure name is not important at this moment when pressure is selected we can go ahead and select which edge we want to apply that so continue select this edge now look if you select this edge that edge is unselected so to select, select both edge you first select one page uh, face and then uh, click uh, shift in your keyboard and select the other face and then both of these faces are now selected click done and then it will bring this particular pop-up so it says load pressure this is the name load one default we want to give pressure and then uh, here we have to define what's the magnitude of pressure so we know this is 6.25 megapascal so megapascal would mean e to the power 6 so we will accept and see if the direction is right yes the direction is right the pressure is exerted upwards or outwards in the edge next thing we have to do is deal with the boundary condition double click this bcs that means boundary conditions uh, let's go ahead and just uh, change the name to fixed so this is a fixed boundary condition we want so there are several ways of getting a fixed boundary condition 
one of the way is to define this h to be uh, n castre. So when this is selected, click continue, and then it says the select where the region where you want to give the boundary conditions. So I select this edge, and uh, again, shift in the keyboard, this edge, and done. And then it brings me this pop-up. You see, this is the Ancastre boundary condition. If I click that, that would mean U1, U2, U3. This is the three translational degrees of freedom in X, Y, and Z direction. Also, UR1, UR2, and UR3. This is the rotational degree of freedom about the first, second, and third uh, axis in three-dimensional coordinate. So if you say one is X, two is Y, and three is Z. So all of these degrees of freedom are is equal to zero. That means this edge is not moving anywhere or it's not rotating uh, uh, about any axis. So if you accept, so our boundary conditions are fulfilled. Now, next thing that we need to do is to define the mesh or divide this whole uh, part into small elements. To do that, uh, we will uh, take the help of module and click mesh. Once you are there, uh, you see this one option that says seed and that another option related to mesh. So I find it easier to access seed and mesh from here. So let's take an example and see what seed means. So let's click seed and I say I select instance. So if you remember earlier that the instance is the part when I put into the assembly. So instance would basically mean this particular part uh, into the assembly. So if I say seed instance, then that brings up this dialog or that uh, give, brings this option that select the part instance to be assigned global seed. So select this done and then you have this pop-up it says approximately what's the global size of the seed now i know you still don't understand what seed is but it would be very clear uh, soon so if i say that uh, the global seed size is 0 0.001 and apply then we get to see small dots the distance between any two dot any two dots are 0 0.001 meter or 1 millimeter so if i say this is 0 0.005 apply so that means these are the seeds and uh, these seeds are the guideline for the mesh for example, you can expect, so there will be mesh around here. So the, this internal point of the mesh, we still don't know where it can be here, here, or it can be a perfect square. But we can be sure once we define our seed uh, like we did, then one of the uh, elements node will be here, another is going to be here, another is going to be here, another going to be here. But we still don't know how the mesh will be divided inside now in, in mesh control if we use free that means uh, the distribution of the nodes inside this uh, part the node of the elements are going to be free if you say structure they're going to be a little more uh, structure for ex for example it might be symmetry around this line but as this is a very simple part we can we, we it's optional to us we can choose any of them so if we keep free and uh, use this medial axis uh, algorithm and click ok so we have defined that how the mesh in this part gonna be um, gonna look like now to see or actually perform this meshing, we have to go to mesh and then instance. That would say that meshing the whole instance. So if you do that, it will say like uh, a pop-up 
select that and you have the whole part uh, meshed so by that you have completed all the necessary steps in the model so next step is to do the analysis so it doesn't matter is it uh, expanded or not but then we will go to job so it will bring up uh, this particular uh, window so this name is optional we gave it uh, exercise uh, one and this model is by default selected continue and once you do continue this is the pop-up you just accept and okay just doing that there is a job named exercise under this analysis tree so the last thing you do is right click and submit so the computation has started give it few seconds the job has been submitted if you are it's running now anytime you can right click and monitor this job or what's the progress of this job for instance no progress so far It seems like it, it is completed that's you can see also uh, under job so to see the results you have to right click and uh, click results and there you have the result when you click uh, this particular contour plot and right now what you have in control plot is von Mises stress you can change it to anything else you can change it to Tresca you can change it to uh, different principal stress or uh, this uh, three directional stress uh, in x y and z direction so this is stress when you select s here but you can select e which means uh, strain you can select u which means uh, for example displacement you can see so the magnitude of displacement is now distributed so it's uh, very logical that the magnitude of displacement is very low here and relatively higher here because it will be fixed and it would be pulled. So we anyway, we go back to stress and this is the stress distribution in the part. So we see the stress is less around here where we pull the joint. The stress is high and the maximum stress is uh, 6.95 megapascal. But if you ask me, uh, it seems the stress is uh, quite low. We expect the stress to be a little higher. So one of the reasons could be we have uh, we don't have much uh, element around this edge because this is this edge is uh, the area of interest uh, or where you can expect the maximum stress. So there are two ways now we can go forward. We increase the number of elements overall or we try to use quadratic element so by, let me show you what i mean by quadratic element if i go to mesh again and then i go to element type select so we make sure uh, this one is a uh, plain stress element now we can use quadratic and uh, untick this reduced integration and click ok so just by doing that you cannot see but uh, the type of this element has changed that means now this element actually does more calculation as it is quadratic so remember this uh, quad that you have seen earlier means this rectangle or or square is different that uh, than the quad that we or quadratic that we right now selected but anytime whenever you make any model uh, changes in the model you can go ahead and uh, right click and submit this job again it will give a pop-up that do you want to overwrite just accept and now we are having a second run to this job wait a couple of uh, seconds and now it is the job is completed right click and uh, results see the contour of result and here you go now the maximum stress is 9.44 megapascal that's something i uh, expected
So just by changing the element type, we could achieve a bit more accurate result. So there is another way, as I said, to improve the result is when you define the seed, you define such that the number of elements are larger than what it is here now. Uh, next thing is asked in this exercise is to define the location of maximum stress. And this could be done by visiting here. It brings the pop-up, go to limit, and show the location of maximum stress. Apply, and there you go. Here you have the location of maximum stress, which is 9.44 megapascal, given that you have applied stress of 6.25 megapascal. So there is stress concentration here. And this is how the uh, stress, one misses stress distribution looks like.